Alrighty guys, well, it's finally here. Those of you guys who follow my channel, you know I have been waiting for a long time for this trailer. Uh, this is not actually the trailer that I ordered. The, it was a different manufacturer that I ordered from, but they had yet another delay and it was gonna be another month or a month and a half. And the dealership had just gotten these in and I looked it over, I thought it through. It's a tiny bit more expensive than the one I was, that I had on order. But I think it's a better fit actually. And I just decided to go ahead and pull the trigger. It's a Max D, 16 feet long, 8,000 pound axles. So it is rated as a uh, gross vehicle weight rating, 17,500 pounds, which I'm sure I will probably almost never have that much weight in it. Because most of the time I'm going to be hauling trash, construction debris, yard cleanup stuff, that sort of thing. So it's going to be, it'll hold a lot, but it won't be that heavy. So I wanted to do a quick walk around there. And then I'm going to do a more detailed uh, kind of a once over, a review of the trailer itself. What I think of it so far. Haven't hauled anything in it at all, but uh, we'll get to that here in just a second. Okay. Well, I figured we would start here at the front of the trailer, at the gooseneck itself, the connection. Uh, this is a bulldog coupler, and according to the little sticker on there, it is rated at 30,000 pounds, gross vehicle weight rating. Uh, and the ball that I have under there is also a 30,000 pound rated. So I'm way over capacity for the trailer. That's great, that's what I want. Uh, it's got a breakaway switch. Um, it's pretty, you know, there's not a lot to talk about when you talk about the, the coupler. Bulldog couplers are pretty common. When you pull that pin, the handle-shaped pin, um, then you go to set it down on there, it will automatically pop open and then close. Uh, and then you just drop that pin to lock it. Set the little bronze-looking pin there to uh, hold it so it can't pop back out. <clears throat> it's got a seven-way cord. Uh, plug in and a lot of cord a lot of extra cord so that won't be a problem I have a uh, plug in my bed obviously but you can if you didn't and you needed to use it just on the back of the bumper you could do that just as well so I believe this is a 10 inch I-beam uh, tongue the way they built this is very stout and the welds I've looked it over pretty closely um, I've heard lots of other videos on YouTube, people complaining about the weld quality and different things on a lot of different brands of trailers, um, but these look beautiful. They did a nice job on this. So under here, we have, well, let's see, let's look at this. We've got these supports built in here, and that is, uh, feels like at least eighth inch. Actually, that's quarter inch. So those are quarter inch steel plates, nice and stout. The cable for the wiring is all contained under here. It's nice. Got my spare tire mounted up above. And that is a uh, full-size wheel and tire. It's a 16-ply. Heavy, heavy, thick wheels. I'll get to that when I get around there. Okay, so moving in underneath the uh, the tongue. You know, you can look, actually, you know, I'll step back. We can look at the clearance here between the truck and the trailer. That was something that as I was looking at trailers, I, it's really difficult to tell sometimes, but there's there's a good two feet in here. And this is a long bed truck. So if you had a short bed truck, you'd probably have a little bit less distance at the back of your truck from the ball. And so you might actually have more clearance on the trailer, but this is plenty. I can jackknife it all the way around and not have an issue. So under here, we've got our, our uh, this is the box that has the batteries and the pump in it. And it's got a uh, regular place to plug in a regular 110 extension cord. And that's what charges your batteries. <clears throat> it also supports, supposedly 
charge as well it's hooked to the truck but the guys told me that that's really really slow so you're better off to use the uh, 110 so it's got two interstate batteries uh, hydraulic pump down here it's got a uh, remote with a pretty long cord I haven't unraveled the cord all the way but it's nice and it's magnetic so you can put it up on the side or whatever there's a little cut out here in the side of the box for the cable so you can have the lid down with the cable out uh, on this side it's just an open open floor open box for chains and straps and binders and whatever else stuff you might need in there and for some reason they said on the telescopics they use a metal hydraulic tank so that's good uh, a little more sturdy I guess less likely to crack and get damaged <clears throat> so this bar that goes through here this is for the the landing gear that's for the crank handle on the outside there and oh look at there they got a little troubleshooting guide so if you have things that maybe go wrong it's not working something's weird um, they got a nice little thing there to at least get you pointed in the right direction maybe save a call to the dealership or the service department so overall like i said i looked it over once the finish looks pretty darn good but there's a little little rust spots here and there um obviously they didn't take maybe as much care as you would think inside the lid um but it's a dump trailer it's going to get used and it's going to get <clears throat> abused and so that's okay i'm not going to nitpick over the little bit of rust and whatever this is arizona it's not going to be a real rusty trailer no matter what <clears throat> so this thing this lid is pretty heavy you want to be on top of it when you get a hold of it when you go to set it down it's got those little supports on here but when it gets right towards the bottom it kind of lets go and if you're not paying attention it comes down pretty hard <clears throat> so got landing gear these are i believe these are 10,000 pound jacks on both sides at least 10 they might even be 12s let's see if the one on the other side has a sticker on it no got grease certs on it so that you can grease the gears inside uh it's got the spring loaded foot pad you pull this thing out and you can save yourself a lot of space a lot of cranking time by putting the feet down and the same thing when you let it up i guess you just kind of let it fly up there but i i tend not to do that to my kind of stuff i take a little more care of it in here you can see the telescopic ram so there's kind of a gap in there uh, might even utilize some of this space build in a little tray or a toolbox another toolbox in there there is a toolbox under the bed that i'll show you that when i lift it up in a little bit it's got a built-on tarp system uh, these are i forget what they call these little wings on here um, but you can just unlatch this let it go free like so and then it will unroll you can just walk this thing back to the back and uh, hook it there's a couple of latch points at the back and then when you're ready to wind it back up this handle is adjustable many different ways and you can let's see here i probably when i wind it leave this open pull it tight and then lock it so this is nice and snug i gotta get i gotta do this all once or twice that's the first time i even touched that tarp handle <clears throat> turn it around so i don't smack my head on it walking by so the sides of this trailer are flared out you can see they're flared under here so it's a little wider at the top it's uh seven feet six foot eleven or something like that inside between where the fenders are and so i think it's actually eight feet at the top where it's flared out um 10 gauge walls the sides are rolled over nice and stout and it's got right here it's already got a little ding in it a little dent you can kind of see that and that's okay you know the first dent they say is the hardest so this one comes with one dent already in it so that takes away the initial pain when you get that first dent i'm not gonna worry too much about that <clears throat> got some little little rings on here 
the tarp it hooks at the back and you can pull it tight but it's also got grommets down the side so that you can uh you can use a bungee cord or something you can also hook them in the bottom of these these pockets here it does not have stake pockets on the top of the rail but it does at the back for some reason so i'm not sure why it would need that but i've already thought about if i wanted to raise this up a little taller there's some brackets you can buy that i could bolt through the side and put a like a two by 12 across that edge and raise it up another foot and then i'd have a huge amount of volume in there it's already i think almost 14 yards with what it is three foot high sides with the flare on them and the width and everything so it will hold a lot of material so it has a combination barn doors and a spreader gate so if you want to spread you just let this up that releases the tailgate like so and you have some chains that you hook in here and there's this pin right here this is for the other end of the chains and you hook that and you set your length of how wide you want that gate to be open while you're spreading material and then when it's closed you just lock it down with that <clears throat> it's got drop leg supports here in the back you just pull the little pin let those down that's for if you're loading equipment a uh, tractor a razor or a jeep which i may use this for on time to time uh, that just helps support the rear of the trailer as you're driving something heavy up into the back of it so the barn doors just held in there with this latch and these are similar to the back of a semi truck or a shipping container swing open here they've got a a chain and that oh actually you know what that's what that loop is for that's why there's only one loop back here that's for your doors to keep them from flying back when you're dumping and bending the doors all up i've heard that can happen to you so i'll be real careful when i have this thing up in the air i got to make sure these are always hooked like so that way you don't bend your doors all up and it's interesting they put the chains on the inside at first i thought it seemed like it'd be more logical on the outside but it would also scratch up the outside of your door so i guess that's why they do that so this there's the inside of it it's got the seven gauge floor seven gauge is the same as three sixteenths so it is a stout floor and it's all one piece it looks like doesn't look like there's any seams in there walk it all the way up nope one complete solid piece of <coughs> 3 16 steel <coughs> excuse me also it looks like i don't know if that's on the outside it's got to be on the outside they stamp it after they powder coat it i think it's powder coat it could be just paint d-rings in the corners welded in down to the bottom for if you have again a piece of equipment a little tractor or something you want to put in here tie it down and at the back it's got d-rings in the back as well uh, those are mounted up on the side and that just i think is to, so that material whatever you have in here when you're dumping and it's sliding out won't snag on that if it was here at the bottom so the sidewalls uh 10 gauge is pretty stout 10 gauge is eighth inch steel so that's pretty thick you can see how how thick that edge is but then you get down here to this guy and this thing is really really thick this is up a little bit on each side and it's not because it's bent it's because this other plate goes under it. it it sort of rolls under there a little bit so nice and heavy not gonna bend that floor up dumping concrete or whatever in there 
So it's got ramps underneath the back. And I haven't even pulled one of these guys out yet, so we're gonna do that right now. It's got a handle right in the ramp. That's nice, so you don't smash your fingers trying to pull it out. I believe these things are like seven feet long, and I imagine they're really heavy. And they are. Huh, they're heavy, but they're stout. You could drive anything up those. And they just hook on that rim. This is nice. I've seen some others, uh, different designs that were, it's like an angle iron that's welded on there. And so rocks and debris and crap out of the trailer gets caught in it. You got to clean it out all the time. These are solid. Ooh. So, uh, or I mean, they're not solid, they're open. So nothing will hang up in there. So that's nice. Two ramps. Those are nice, nice stout ramps made out of channel steel. Stabilizer on this side. Okay, well, uh, look at the tires and wheels on the other side in the sunlight. And then I'll put that ramp back. So, these are 16 ply tires, 17 and a half inch wheels. And I don't know if you guys can see, these are steel, these are not aluminum. But that is, I, I don't even know how thick that is. It's thicker than the floor in the trailer. So I'm gonna guess it is uh, 3 8 That's 3 8 steel, very, very stout. And that's because of the weight rating of the trailer. Um, these 8,000 pound axles, I think a lot of times come with an oil bath setup, but this one has already been converted and so it's got grease and grease bearings. And so if I pull this little rubber cap off right here, it'll have a grease dirt in there. Okay, I went ahead off camera, put the ramp away. That, those things are, they are stout. That is a chore for one person to take those in and out. So luckily I don't think I'll have to use those very often. I might even take them off and store them at home because I mean each one's got to be a hundred pounds so that's a lot of extra weight on there. I mentioned about the tires and the wheels and the hub assembly already being converted to a grease setup and I'm really actually glad about that. I was going to do that anyway. I don't... Oil bath is a really good lubricating system but the seals once they start to go bad a little bit you can lose all your oil real fast and on a typical this cap would be clear so you can see your oil level, but it's a clear plastic and if it gets banged on something, uh, going through the landfill, somebody accidentally kicks it, steps on it, whatever, you can break them and then you lose all your oil. So you gotta have a couple of those spares all the time. Uh, with grease, you can lose the cap, it's not great, but you won't lose all your grease. You'll lose some, it'll come out and fly on the tires and whatnot, but uh, it'll get you home usually So All right We're gonna raise this booger up It is kind of slow. I raised it up down at the dealership To try it out It's not the speediest ram system and they kind of say that about these telescopics, but the nice thing about them is they will lift anything they are they are so strong and because of the leverage they have being mounted to the very front of the trailer they don't have a problem sometimes with a scissor lift setup you can actually overload the trailer a little bit too far or too much to the front see this cable can go right in there keep it from getting pinched see if this is tangled up oh it's not look at that so this thing, let's see how long is this cable. If I was trying to dump and spread gravel from inside the truck, oh, that'd be tough. It doesn't quite reach to the front. So I might have to see about an extended cable or I believe you can retrofit this and put a remote, wireless remote on there. So anyway, it's up down. Just a pretty simple button up and down. It is uh, gravity down on the 
on the hoist so you don't use up battery and power up so there's no locks on a dump trailer like this there's no latches or catches or chains or anything at the front that holds it down it's just its own weight and i guess the the compressed ram helps to hold it in place too but it's so heavy it's not flopping around so let's raise her up <clears throat> i'm just going to do this in real time so you can see what it takes it's not super fast um but like i said it'll lift anything i think this hoist is rated at uh 24 or 25,000 pounds so it'll never ever have that much in it it's a three-stage hoist and the first one is the slowest because it's the largest and so it takes the most volume of oil to fill it up and push it so it's the slowest when it starts when it hits the second stage it'll speed up a little bit and when it hits the third stage it'll speed up even more but then on the way down it's reversed i guess the first stage is the slowest coming down and it actually speeds up as you get closer to the bottom so there's the second stage you can see it sped up a little bit you can see underneath here as it's raising i believe these are those are 12 inch centers on those cross pieces and those are nice heavy channel cross pieces so it's very very heavy reinforced you can see where the ramps are under there how they're set in so we're still on the second stage i don't know how long it's been but it's uh it's definitely not super fast which is okay there's the third stage now that's the fastest stage on the way up <clears throat> and it goes and it goes it's such a tall thing i'll have to really be careful around uh houses and stuff if i ever have to raise it up make sure there's no power lines okay that's all the way up so let's back up here so we can see it i'm going to take this off <clears throat> so i can make sure i get a good look at it it's up there pretty high it's a pretty good dump angle i think it's a little more than 45 degrees Okay, I'll put this back on my head so I can use both hands. Okay, so we have underneath here a nice big storage box for shovels and rakes and brooms and whatever else you might want to store under here. You've got a uh, support stand that locks in place so if you have to be under the trailer, there's a pocket up there on the top. I think you can see that. And that sits in that support stand <clears throat> so that if you're underneath here doing something servicing it whatever you don't have to worry that it's going to fall down and smash you i mentioned the 12 inch centers on the cross pieces it's really nice very heavy built uh, just a pretty basic rectangular frame for the bottom of the trailer and you can see how the the side of the frame is inside the uh, side of the what would this be the main frame rail for the trailer um so that that lowers the bed height just a little bit whatever that that thickness of this rail is i think it's four inches so that drops the bed height or the the deck height down four inches a lot of trailer manufacturers actually that rail will be a box tube a rectangular tube and it's spaced out here just a little bit and it sits right on top of that frame and so that raises up the uh, the height of the of the deck which is not really a big deal i guess except if you're loading a piece of equipment and it's got a relatively shallow loading angle doesn't have a lot of clearance then that can be a little bit of a problem <clears throat> there's a spring under there I don't know if you can see that down there by that chain and that spring is what puts tension that spring is what puts tension on the uh spreader gate latch and holds it closed 
once it's in its locked position. I think I'm gonna drill a hole in that anyway. There's a spot where I can drill through two pieces and put a little pin in there to hold it. So once I lock it, I know it won't accidentally pop open driving down the road. Okay, so 8,000 pound axles times two. Nice heavy springs. You can see the springs over there. The wiring for the uh, brakes is back there. Pretty simple system, it's just a pivoting uh, block. They're called slipper springs. So in the middle, they have eyes in there and that's where they actually are bolted on to that flex piece in the middle. This one up here in the front also has one. So let's see, how's that gonna work? This side has a bolt through the eye. That side over there has a bolt under the eye to keep it from falling out. But as that pivots up and down and compresses, that end of it can slide in and out inside that block. And these, it's got a big gob of grease on it, but they made, that's a, it's called a wet bolt. And it's got a hole bored through the middle of it and then a couple of spots in the inside. So you can grease through that and it greases inside of there where there's a bushing. So that pivots easy. Nice heavy, heavy fenders welded all the way along the side with a little support in here nice and stout all led lighting all recessed so i like it pretty happy with it let's let her down nice and quiet coming down oh you know what before i do that let's take a look from the back <clears throat> with it up That's a big dude. And you can see at the back, it's got a lot of clearance at the ground point. Some trailers, they build with drop axles and they make them specifically, they call them a low pro dump trailer. And they're great, again, for loading equipment and stuff, but you have to be careful because when you tilt it all the way up, that back end gets really, really close to the ground. And if you're in the landfill and there's crap all over the place and junk and stuff that you're running over, you can you can get the back end hung up in the ground in the dirt, or you can knock out your your tail lights, stuff like that. So, all right, now let's let her down. And so the first ram that wasn't too awful bad. Oh, see, the guy was. He told me wrong. He said it would speed up as it was coming down and it does the same thing as going up. The, uh, the bigger the ram section, the slower it is. That makes sense. There's more oil in there. That oil has to get squeezed back out through the tubes and back into the pump reservoir. So the hair slowed down again. The bigger section is slow. Oh, look at that. I didn't, for, I didn't remember to put my safety bar down just like that wouldn't have hurt it but it would have stopped it nice stout uh attachment point down here at the bottom where they've welded that into the frame and a nice stout attachment on the front of the bed as well Slowly, slowly on the way down. A little more, come on. And there you go. That's down all the way. Okay, what else is there to talk about on this thing? Not a lot. Oh, I had a piece of wood in there. That'll be part of my first trash load. I'll leave that in there. These are the hooks for the spreader, or not the spreader, for the uh, tarp. When the tarp comes back, it latches into this and then you can crank it tight from that end. A couple of pins on here. Um, that's what it hangs on when you're using the spreader and I guess it's also if you needed to take the whole tailgate off you just pull these cotter pins out 
I'll probably get something a little better for that that might fit that hole a little bit better and uh, find a better way to attach that. Um, I'm gonna unhook the chains for the back, for the gates. Close, <clears throat> close the tailgate again. Don't forget that. These are nice, easy to use. We'll see how this does for the latching system because this same thing I've heard can get <clears throat> rocks and stuff caught in it. And then uh, you gotta clean it out before you can close your, before you can latch your tailgate. Not really a big deal. Close that all up, pin it shut, <clears throat> pins are in for the ramps, those are going to get replaced obviously with locks so that my ramps don't disappear. I don't have to worry about my stabilizer legs because they're too long to take out. I think you'd actually have to raise the bed all the way up or put the trailer up on blocks to get those things out. So I don't have to worry about those disappearing. If I have stuff in that under storage box, nobody can get to that. And this box up here locks. So overall, it's not too bad. I have a nice big heavy duty coupler lock on the way that should be here in a couple of days uh, from a company called Fort Knox. They make some really, really stout couplers for fifth, uh, fifth gooseneck ball couplers. And then it also comes with a piece that secures one of those two pins because I guess people put a lock on the bottom and they don't remember to lock those. Somebody can just loosen those bolts, drop the whole assembly out and put in their own and away they go with your trailer. When it's at my house, it'll be secure. I've got a nice secure little spot. And my truck will be backed in in front of it where nobody could get to it anyway. But it's an expensive trailer and I don't want it to get stolen. So when, I'm, when I have it parked at a job, I wanna make sure that it's secure. All right guys, so I'm gonna roll this up, roll the cord up, put it away close everything up and take this home i just i literally just brought this up from phoenix i went down and picked it up this morning haven't even taken it home and showed my wife yet so that's where i'm going next hope you guys enjoyed this review and uh i will catch you later